And we are live. And we are live. Welcome to Reason Speak on Secular TV. Today is the 27th of January in the year 2015. Being for the 27th of January, it is um, national, I believe it's national, but probably international Holocaust Remembrance Day. Today uh, on our uh, show, we have our co-host, and that'll be Lou. Say hi, Lou. Hi, oh, I'm, I'm going to do a rant today, so just right. forewarning you. Okay, and then as well, we have a guest, yeah. and today's guest is Mental Outlaw. Welcome. What's good, Mental Outlaw? Excellent. Uh, you know me from making fun of random shit that I see, mostly religious satire type shit. Love yeah. It. I'm that Love guy. It. Now, now, I just want to talk a couple of minutes on uh, on holocausts um, because it's it's not a it's not a uh, it's not an easy subject to talk about. But the problem I have is that there's been so many holocausts throughout history that it would be remiss. I, I, it would be remiss of me not to mention uh, uh, the top ten. Okay. Now, um, we all know about the, the Jewish Holocaust, but I'm going to go through them in a little bit of a, 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 a little bit of a, um, a, a 10, 9, 8 sort of thing. Now, the first um, Holocaust that uh, we all know about is the one that, uh, I don't know if it happened or not because it's from the Old Testament, but essentially it's the... Uh, the um, Israel's arch enemies, the Amalekites and the Midianites, were wiped out and uh, removed from this planet. Uh, I don't know when that was, but that was certainly within the last 5,775 uh, years. Uh, we also have a genocide going on in North Korea, which started in 1945 and pretty much uh, continues to this present day uh, in the uh, workers' paradise of North Korea. Uh, as well, I don't know if anybody, if uh, many of you know this, but after World War II, a lot of ethnic Germans and, uh, and and Slavs who supported them were sort of expelled from the Soviet Union, and um, well, 14 million of them, uh, and they were forcefully displaced, uh, I guess, back to uh, back to um, Eastern and Central Europe. Uh, a ha uh, Figures range from a half a million to two million people who died, mostly of disease, but it's still it's still a genocide. Another another one we have uh, in the 20th century was uh, the partition of India in 1947, um, when uh, Pakistan was born, and, uh, and and there was some some transfer of <clears throat> of uh, peoples. A major genocide happened there; millions killed. Um, Looks like also about 14 million. Uh, don't forget, we had the Rwandan massacre in 1994, where up to a million people were just hacked to death, hacked with machetes, uh, horrible, in the street. Nobody did anything. The United Nations was there. NATO was there. Kind of didn't do anything. Then we had the Armenian genocide, which uh, lasted from 1915 to 1923. That was... Um, uh, that was conducted by the uh, Ottoman Turks, um, and they killed, deported, and starved to death as many as 1.8 million Armenians, as well as other non hundreds of thousands of non-Turks. Uh, we have the killing fields of Cambodia, which which ran from 1975 to 1978. Um, the Khmer Rouge, in their in their attempt to, to um, establish a utopian state, killed uh, about two million people in the process. And then we have the Jewish Holocaust, which lasted from 1939 to 1945, and uh, which, you know, uh, killed about uh, six million Jews uh, amongst the 11 million in total, who were uh, exterminated. Uh, don't forget Stalin, 1929 to 1953, 
the purges, the murders, the millions of killed Ukrainians, don't forget, that was genocide. And uh, the last one I'm going to mention is the, the Cultural Revolution, the Great Leap Forward in China. Now that lasted from 1970, 1949 to 1976. <sighs> 70 million people, 70 million people dead. Yeah. Uh, whew, that's, that's horrible to say things like that, to have to mention stuff like that. So I'm going to get away from that now. And I'm just going to give you a plug for Secular TV, Secular TV, which is what you're watching right now. And uh, the goal of Secular TV is to help promote uh, unique and interesting content while focusing on a variety of diverse ideas that appeal to various groups in the secular community. And with that, I am going to pass the microphone over to Lou. Lou? Yeah, um, and Mental Outlaw, has, he uh, mentioned previously that he, he looked into this uh, story where uh, you, you'll have to explain what state it is and all the details, but where they're basically trying to legalize domestic violence because it's, you know, religion. So did you want to tell us more about that, Mental Outlaw? Yeah, um, I'm pulling it up right now. I had to look through the actual... Uh, I guess you would call it the bill with all the legal speak in it. Now, granted, I'm not a lawyer. I'm definitely not a legal professional. But it pretty much looked like it was saying you can do just about whatever you want, and it actually included a clause that <clears throat> gives you the right to discipline your children however you want, um, educate them however you want, things like that and it falls under the umbrella of they're calling it religious freedom and they cited some cases where people tried to use this to like get away with horrible atrocities like there was a uh, 10 year old no 8 year old boy who died in 2003 after being beaten and locked in a closet for not accepting Jesus Christ so if a law like this were to pass in Georgia, which is the state that I currently live in, basically, if you're a Christian, fundamentalist Christian, or Muslim, whatever, you can abuse your children, abuse your wife, do whatever the fuck you want to them, and when you get sent off to court, you can just say, oh, well, it's in my religion, and hold up your Bible, hold up your Quran and you probably won't get charged for it. Well, oh, my goodness. So, so does that you think that's going to go so far as to say, "Hey, uh, stone your children to death?" That's it's funny you would mention that cuz that's actually in the bottom of the article. They were saying um, to everybody that's going to vote on this, remember some verse in Deuteronomy that says to stone your daughter to death if she's married and not a virgin. You know, like if uh, she gets married off and they find out she's had her cherry popped, stone her to death at her father's front door. Oh, fun. I, yeah. yeah. That's a good Christian time. family value. Charming, charming. Uh, way to go. Way, way to uh, meet up justice. I love it. Stone her to death at the front door. Yeah. But, but you know, <laughs> another thing that's kind of... Um, that's ironic about this is the a lot of the Republicans here in Georgia they're not a big fan of Muslims so I wonder if they'd be supporting Sharia law because under a bill like this you could probably implement Sharia law I wonder if they'd be a fan of that now Sharia law does it apply to everybody or just to Muslims every they, they what, uh, well from, <laughs> yeah from what I hear Sharia law basically all it is is literally means religious law <laughs> So any religious law is Sharia law. So when we're passing these pro fundamentalist Christian laws, that's Sharia law, apparently, uh -huh. according to what I've heard. So what's the Christian version of the word Sharia? I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure about that. But I mean, to be honest, if something like Sharia law passed in Georgia, which I mean, I doubt it would, but if something like that were to pass, people like me would probably I don't know. I think I'd get beheaded. I insult the Prophet Muhammad. What does that? What does that get me? A beheading or a stone? That'll get you. A, that'll get you. A, no, it'll get you a good torturing and then a beheading. Yeah, a good if, torturing. If you, okay. Yeah, yeah. If, if you I look, have nipple clamps, I'm okay with that. 
Yeah. No, you're... I think it's more like scourging, you know, ripping pieces of your skin off your body while you're still alive in strips and, you know. Ooh, damn. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a stuff. little bit too kinky even for me. <laughs> Listen, yeah. they do it. They're doing it today. They're doing it in the Islamic State today. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody does anything. I can't understand it. I really, I just... Oh, gosh, is that Turkey or Saudi Arabia? Or where was that? Or was there, that was one, there was one in Mecca, I think, last week or two weeks ago. A woman was beheaded in the streets because she was yeah, accused of murder. That. And yeah. in that, uh, I, I think it's under Sharia law. If you're a woman and you're unfortunately live in one of those areas where Sharia law applies to you, you need five witnesses to say that you didn't do something. So, like, if a man like myself or either one of you two accuses a woman in that uh, area, she needs five witnesses to say she didn't do it. Otherwise, Well, you know, I, watched, uh, I was watching a video the other day of a beheading in Saudi Arabia. Um, beheading a woman. <clears throat> so, but the woman w was fighting. She wouldn't. She wouldn't sort of submit and and sort of kneel down and put her head down. And, and she she was just you know moving around and screaming and shouting and protesting. So eventually they put they took this like scarf thing, not very long, put it around her neck so that they could hold it. And then the what the guy did was he he pulled on the scarf until she was kind of um, lying on her side. And then with the with her lying on her side, with him pulling on the scarf, he 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 lifted his sword and fucking chopped off her head while she was protesting. Really? I I, yeah. I that sounds very similar to the same one that that I saw. Um, just the video that I saw in Live League said it was in Mecca. So we, I mean, it may have been the same thing, but shit. To be honest, they behead so many you know, people I, that it could be two different ones. I've watched. I've watched count. I've watched. I was a countless, but I've watched dozens of beheading videos in the last few months. Um, I'm I'm numb to it. I'm, I I I don't like the way that I don't like the fact that I'm numb to it. But because because when I first saw a, my first beheading, when I first saw the saw, it, I, I had a physical reaction to it. I uh, I was shocked. I was a little bit numb. Uh, you know, it lasted for a while. But now I see them. I don't know, it doesn't phase me. I, you know, I could be eating my Wheaties at the same time. And it, it bothers me. It really does. And, yeah, uh, I, I can feel you on that. I've seen quite a bit of them, too. Like, one of my friends uh, showed me it back in, gosh, I was like 15 at the time. Mm -hmm. And he uh, showed me this one where this guy was getting his um, head cut off. They were doing it with a knife, and he was screaming. And the screams were coming through the dude's throat, but, like, not through his mouth because his head was halfway chopped off. And I puked in a trash can that was right next to the guy's computer because yeah. I couldn't handle it that time. But I'd say I'm probably at about the same point as you where I've seen it so much that I'm just, like, numb to it. It's you know, the, crazy, one, though. the one that I saw that really bothered me that I was numb to it was when they, they, um, they had this guy... He was leaning over, exposing his neck, and then the executioner, he had this, I don't know, big knife or something, and he, and he hacked down onto the guy's neck, and, and then you, you could see the skin separating, and the whole, you know, like when you, I don't know, when you chop meat, it just sort of separates, and he hacked once, and you could see it, and then twice, and you could see it, you could see inside his neck, inside his, from behind, and then he, and then three or, two or three more times, and the head was off, it was just... Oh, and I, I, I watched it numb. Fuck. Yeah, it still pisses me off. I can't. Yeah, that's, off. What, that's what Islam has done to me, and I'm pissed off at that. So fuck you, Islam. Yeah. I could, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like when people go around chopping heads off and hands and, I don't know, massacring whole villages just for the hell of it, I guess. Um, I think slaughtering whole villages is kind of a hobby down in Africa right now. Uh, it is. I mean, who's saying anything? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone doing anything? No? Hmm? Not so Couple much. Of African countries sending some soldiers, hmm? not being able to find anyone. 200 girls were kidnapped out in a way, three, four, five, six months ago, whatever. Anyone seen them? Yeah, I don't see Turkey or Saudi Arabia or Iran sending any humanitarian troops in there at all. 
No. Yeah. And you know what really pisses me off now that I think about it? They in Saudi Arabia they block they flog in this atheist and yeah. and the guy that uh, raped Badawi that they sent it to ten years in jail and and, and a thousand f floggings and this that. And Obama, Barack Obama, the, the, the Muslim president of the United States, actually goes to Saudi Arabia to attend the, the, the dead uh, king's funeral. Man, what does that tell you? I don't, I don't like Obama. Um, <laughs> uh, that, my opinion on that, I mean, honestly, there's, there's so many people, it seems like, especially in America, where... Anytime there's some atrocity committed under this flag of oh that's my religion, they're always so they're 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 so touchy to say something about it. Like as we can see with the um, Charlie Hebdo thing, the the fact that insulting somebody's religion being a bad thing, the fact that that's even on the table, just shows you that people are fucking pussies to say anything about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it doesn't matter that your belief is sacred. I can believe in a fucking flying pink unicorn and say that it's sacred. <laughs> it doesn't mean but as long as I don't insult you, sacred on it doesn't mean anything. The green yeah. leprechauns told me to kill a bunch of people today. You know, so right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. um, Lou. Yeah. You said you had uh, a rant. Yeah, well, actually, we're getting close to that anyway. So. Oh, okay, good. I'm just looking forward to it. So I avoided watching the State of the Union for several days now. I just watched it today, plus the response video by the psycho. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who's the psycho? <laughs> the, I, how do I... I don't... Oh, gosh. I, I, the guy speaks pretty. He has a pretty mouth. That's what I can say about Obama. <laughs> He sure have a pretty mouth. <laughs> but at the end of the day, no matter how much candy coating you put on a turd, it's it's still a turd. And that's what he was selling during that speech. It was one big I, I didn't notice that the, uh, the, 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 the military. Yeah, and he was trying. I mean, it's not that he lied. He lied by omission. Like he hit like a, the things we have done good over the past few years. He promoted that. Um, we've stopped torturing people apparently, which is a good thing, right? But he was saying how he's going to work with the Republicans now that they're in control. The Republicans are not in control of Congress. The crazy people are. The Tea Party's in control of America right now. From the, the literally the first day they took office, they attacked the CBO and uh, Social Security automatically because they can do some kind, some changes they can make administratively. Uh, it's just like parliamentary rules and they don't have to vote on, the, it, you don't have to write a law, it's just a simple vote. So they have, they're already attacking our social safety net and then Obama is talking about working with these nut jobs as if he's going to get anything done. He's like, acting like he's going to accomplish anything more and he can't the only thing he can do is veto that's it all of his ideas for laws he wanted to pass it ain't gonna happen <laughs> the Tea Party's in control and there's where the frickin psycho whore from Iowa whose whole campaign was cutting off pig balls gave the response to the State of the Union and the thing she believes in is a total fantasy world. Nothing she said has any factual basis in reality at all. And, and she's in the Senate on uh, uh, what committee is she on? It's like en the uh, Energy and Resources Committee in the Senate. She's in control of our technology, where we spend tech money on technology on, and she just wants to put it in a pipeline. That's it. Which, hey, if you want atrocities, violates our treaties we have with the Native Americans. Um, it poisons the land. It poisons the water. It's not a matter of maybe it's going to. It's a matter of when that pipeline breaks and it poisons the groundwater, which just happens to be going where we grow all of our food that kind of feeds the planet. 
because America is a big exporter of grain still. So one pipeline to give money to billionaires and, and they're willing to sacrifice our bread basket. So it's just, we got a guy selling empty promises and sweet nothings and he's saying he wants to work with psychos. So yeah, I don't like Obama at all. That's it. <laughs> I'm spent. Yeah, I mean, it, it's when, when you mentioned the whole um, pipeline thing and the fact that it'll, um, you know, it has the potential to harm our food and thus much of the world's food because we do feed much of the world. It's funny how nobody's thinking, or at least the people that want to legislate this, they're not thinking long term. They're just thinking, you know, let me get an extra billion dollars and this short life of mine so I can buy that extra bag of coke and those extra two hookers and so I can have lots of money to have a good time. Fuck the next generation. Fuck my kids. Fuck my grandkids. They don't need no fucking food. I just need to have a good time while I'm here. That's That seems to be the mentality to me. To people who are doing that, I'm sure that these are also people that deny global warming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and oh, who's in charge of that? Was it not Ted Cruz, was it? it was, who the fuck? It, they gave uh, the actual person, the committee in Congress uh, is head of uh, science and education or some shit like that. And I'm like, he doesn't believe in climate change. How can he make science decisions? Yeah, it's like this guy that I work with, which... I don't think he even has his own ideas because every time he comes into work, he seems to just spout some. It's It kind of sounds like some Bill O'Reilly nonsense. He was saying today that if uh, global warming is real, why is it supposed to be uh, snowing next month in Georgia? And I just had to, I had to do one of these. Just shake my head slowly. Yeah. I was in a blizzard in Georgia, but that was like over, I, I think, 25 years ago. And they're literally, those blizzards are supposed to be 20-year storms. So why are they happening every like five years now or three years or whatever it is, right? Yeah, I mean, we got snow last year. And I'm originally from Boston, so it doesn't really bother me, but... People here, the native Southerners, they don't know what the fuck to do. They get an inch of snow and they lose their fucking minds. Uh, yeah. But we're supposed to get, like, I think, four inches next month. So I'm like, shit. Let me just go get my stuff at the store because everybody, everybody buys all the fucking milk. They buy all the milk in one day. Because really? they're like, oh, my gosh, the store, the grid's going to go down. We got them two inches of snow. The grid's <laughs> going down. The trucks are still going to come in. In fact, actually, the whole freaking out over shit actually makes the roads cleared for the trucks, so it's actually easier for them to get through towns when everybody's yeah, staying home. Yeah, that's so, a good point. Yeah, I don't know. There's ups and downs to everything. Boy. But yeah, and just for our one viewer, apparently, we are trying to get the live comments to work, and I don't know why they are not but we'll figure it out one of these days. We work on it constantly. We're kind of we, investigating. Uh, we do have, we do have uh, a, the Q&A up if there's any questions. Is it up? Well, let me check on it then. Yeah, yeah it's up. there's no questions. But oh, damn it. I don't so even know if it's like if they can see it. You'd have to log in. I'm not logged in as oh, a yeah. viewer. Yeah, yeah, okay, you can see it. Good. But the live comments is where it's at. You really need those. And holy shit! And just so everybody knows, we have one. We actually have two guests that have yet to show up. One will whenever they get home. They got held up at school because colleges like to screw people over, and they make they make students worry more about how they're going to pay for the classes than letting the students actually just study and go to class. And that's how financial aid works nowadays, apparently. Yeah, that's that's about right. Yeah. And and yeah, actually I was going to ask a question because you look kind of young compared to the two old men here. So like, are you in school or did you graduate from something yet or what? I've graduated from high school. I have no 
college education, which is evident by my $12 an hour pay. Uh, I want to get my IT certifications to kind of at least get a halfway decent wage so I can pay for my own college. Because <clears throat> I'm fine with taking out a little bit of loans, but I'm not going to take out 50 grand in loans and just work my ass off to pay it back till I'm 60. Right. I'm well, I, can, shit. I can give you some advice on that if you want it. Um, I won't shove it down your throat or anything. <laughs> but, uh, if you have yes, a, I, I, I appreciate you asking whether I want it. Um, sure, go ahead. But if uh, you have a, a nice community college that's local, go and you can apply online. You don't have to go to the school at first at all. Actually, you know, you'll you'll want to start checking time registration times and whatever. But go online, fill out your FAFSA. You might not. You might like change your mind, or if you're, even if you haven't made up your mind, you don't have to accept anything. You'll get a letter of acceptance that you actually have to sign and take into the school before that you get any money whatsoever. So it do, it does not hurt at all to apply, and all you need is I think you need proof of residency, uh, like a driver's license or state ID card and social security number. It's you know the basic basic stuff, and right right. You might be, and you might qualify for enough Pell grants to where you wouldn't have to pay for a couple of quarters, as far as taking out loans and stuff. So it's, I, I always recommend, you know, just do at least apply and, and see what you get. You know, it doesn't hurt. It takes five minutes, and you might get enough to go to school for free for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, hopefully. Like, this summer, I won't have to work full-time because right now I kind of have to just to pay my family's bills. That's a whole other story. Yeah, no, I uh, have <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, hopefully that's something I can do because I uh, already work, like, 50, upwards of 50 hours a week, plus I do YouTube. So hopefully yeah. I can kind of drop that down to part-time, go to school part-time. Yeah, definitely, de definitely. Oh yeah, there's and you're in Georgia, so I have no fucking clue how fucked up the, the state colleges are there. <laughs> I have very, no idea. Fucked up. very. I mean, I mean, some of them are okay, like Georgia Tech's okay. Well, that's uh, university. Most though. of the community colleges here suck, though. Yeah, I imagine they they would, as far as funding at least. But uh, because when I was going. The, it, a part of your financial aid, they also have like work study. So if you're working part time, then you you could actually add a, a, a second part time job, which would be less less hours. It wouldn't be so many hours. But yeah, that's a, that's in my state. I don't like I said. I don't know how Georgia is. And Mike finally got here uh, back from from school. So is she available? Oh, we have to. Present her. Uh, present it. No, not that one. There you go. Okay. Hey, Mike. Hello. Sorry about that. Oh no, I was making sure everything works. <laughs> I was on mute because I was talking to my kid. Oh yeah, and then we always have to click on the little show to everybody button. I guess <laughs> I'm new to these gadgets. It's all it's all demons. From the devil. Uh, I said, so why don't you uh, introduce our new guest? Yeah. And who I <laughs> let's see, uh, Mike is uh, contrib uh, sometimes co-host, I would say, and and usually in in the group of uh, ABPSO, which is a very public banking hub, and we make fun of a lot of retarded people usually. And so that's how I kind of met Mike. And he also does has his own channel where you uh, why don't you explain to us the like the kind con the content of, of your channels because I know you got two of them now. Yeah, the second one's a gaming type channel, but the first one and my main channel is a focus on religion and theology, specifically the history and clearing up issues, basically stuff I learned in seminary before I really started questioning um, like 
translation issues, transliteration issues, uh, historical context, stuff like that. Basically undoing a lot of the apologetics through history itself. And then I have the Karm Harm one that I do, which is, yeah. I swear I'm losing brain cells on. <laughs> That's Matt Slick. Yeah. Uh, which, that, you know, uh, have we all heard of Matt Slick? He's, he's on YouTube here being stupid often. Yeah, I know Matt Slick. Uh, I have no he's idea. Most, what, what kind of stupid are we talking about? He's the most disrespectful, disrespectful, discourteous, rude... Don't forget condescending. ...of a human being I've ever come across, well, I've ever seen on, right. on, uh, on, the, on the interwebs. Yeah. And he's a fundamentalist Christian for, for mental outlaw. Yeah. Yeah. He sounds yeah. a little bit like, um, what, what's, what's that old guy that people are always picking on? Brett Keen. Sounds a little yeah. bit like him. No, he is. I don't know if he's a false flagger or not, but he's definitely a thin-skinned person that gets butt hurt easily. <laughs> uh, but, uh, oh, yeah, in his website, Carm, and we just call it Carm Harm, and uh, he is apparently big into AIG uh, and and uh, the what are those? There, it's across the water from me. The the Michael Behe creation uh, creation scientists. So he's he's balls deep into those things with with Ken Ham and all of that. Oh God, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. But, oh my God. Uh, and uh, what? Oh yeah, and there's. I uh, I'm gonna just take. I'm just gonna jump in yet one moment and. Uh, just to remind you that you are watching Circular TV on Google+. And the goal of Circular TV is to help promote unique and interesting content while focusing on a variety of diverse ideas that appeal to various groups in the secular community. If you are part of the secular community, subscribe, leave a comment, buy some merch, so show your support. So that was it. That was it. <laughs> oh, that was it. Yeah. Mike's dealing with noisy children and husbands and stuff. But uh, <laughs> right. I think. Oh gosh, what was I saying? Yeah, we, like uh, I think it was Paranor mentioned our live comments are fucked at the moment. Um, condition all fucked up. So if you have me or. I guess I got my stuff open. I'm sure Sid might too, or any of us really. If you have us on Google Plus or whatnot, you can send in questions. And if you want to join the panel, uh, let us know, and one of us can send the, the link for that too. Yeah, to, to all five of you that are at this right now. To, are you back yet, Mike? Oh yeah, I'm back. It oh. was just clearing stuff up. I was babbling, I think. Oh, oh yeah, that's the other thing, because you could probably got a, a different section, a, cr a good cross-section of, of uh, viewers that might be outside of the ones like you have in your circles or whatnot. If you if you wanted to, it's obviously up to you, want to explain, like, uh, some of the your background? Um, sure. I kind of... I basically grew up in a non-religious household, but we still went to church basically for the community aspect, and when we were going, I actually asked to be baptized so I could see what the difference, I was like scientifically trying to figure this out at eight, what the difference was between being baptized and not, and I was less than plus about, oh, this is what it feels like to be baptized, I'm wet, okay, but... Um, I went to a church that actually encouraged questioning and asking what's going on, basically. And so because of that, I decided to start studying religion itself as a whole. And when I got the chance, I enrolled in an interfaith seminary that basically, even though it was unaccredited, so that they could teach more than just the Christian side of things, uh, I went there, got my degree, which is now completely useless, but um, to study religion and 
basically learn the sociological and psychological aspects of it. And now I'm going back to school for my sociology degree so I can apply both of those together. Cool, yeah, definitely. And, and you hate math. I've, I've heard that before. That's what I'm fighting with at the college right now is they're saying I knew about my disability beforehand. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you, you, you're, you've had a lot of problems fighting financial aid, at least the college office of it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, see, sometimes college is a pain in the ass. They, they make you worry more about paying for it than about going and doing it sometimes. Yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, I, I kind of ranted about the whole State of the Union stuff. Did you any, either anybody here watch it or... Uh, I watched it. I actually quite enjoyed it and enjoyed the massive schadenfreude boner I was getting watching certain people on there just look angry. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I totally had a, keep a puke pocket by me when I was watching him speak for an hour. It's just, to me, obscenely... I don't know. Sorry, that's... No, there we go. There we go. Yeah, so, and, and, uh, and you said you didn't watch it? Can't, uh... No, I haven't watched it yet. I, um, I saw YouTube advertising it. I'm like, eh. Not yeah. really that interested. Oh, man. Well, I don't, I think after my rant, you didn't really miss much. As I can, I'm not too many. So can you just, can you just trust me? Like, oh, we got noise background. No, okay, I, I uh, killed it. Yeah, I'm not fast at doing that. I'm I'm button pushing retarded on muting and stuff like that. <laughs> what is like? I'm so new. One of my big mistakes is I'll have the watch page open and the actual like join page all open at the same time so when the show goes live you get that echo of the show <laughs> I'm like oh fuck I forgot to mute that out again I, I hope I don't get the reputation as the person that does that all the time I got a question for uh, for me Mental Outlaw as a so, young person you know, do you vote? Uh, you I've only been able to vote once so far and I did vote. Uh, you're talking about for president, or are you just talking about in general? Uh, sure. Let's in general, but president is a good place to start. Okay. So for president, yeah, I voted on that one. I voted for a uh, third party candidate. I forget who it was, but um, it's mo most of the time I don't agree enough with either. Democratic or Republican side, so I vote for a third party knowing good and well they're not going to win, but whatever. Yeah. Um, and last last time we actually had a vote for governor, and I, I feel a little bit like um, I, I don't want to necessarily say uh, oppressed or discriminated because I, I don't know if that's really what went on. But we had one mm -hmm. governor that wanted to raise the minimum wage here up to, I think it was $11 an hour, statewide. And I was going to vote for that person. And I wasn't allowed to go vote on the day of voting because it was on a Tuesday and I had work that entire day. Okay. So I, I, I couldn't go my manager gave some people that day off, but they didn't give me that day off, and she said it's because um, well, I know like why they, they applied for it like earlier than I did, which I, I can't know that for sure. Well, we, we know the real reason. Well, yeah, I, I kind of think that that had something to do with it. Yeah, the, you know, no one wants to talk about that one, but you've, you've, you've suffered the classic voter suppression that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what that word was, but yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm i a little bit skeptical of whether or not that's exactly what happened because 
there weren't many people there. I was busy as hell that day. But then again, at the end of the day, I didn't get to go vote because my manager told me I couldn't. Right. And then Georgia doesn't we have mail-in voting. We were lawyer. Yeah, we have mail-in ballots in my state. Which solves now we have a law here which, uh, which allows anyone, uh, any employee, or, or, or which, which demands that any employer give, a, give their employees time to vote uh, on voting day. If they right. need it. And, For, and well, there's different ways you can solve that. Like you can make a law where people, have, where <clears throat> the employers have to let people vote, like have split shifts, or like I say, I don't know how Canada does it, mail-in ballots. Um, what's wrong with a mail-in ballot? I just changed my 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 voter registration actually and it's going to be a couple of weeks before I get a new card but they check your identity they they actually you have to give them your your driver's license information um, and they check it with the DMV before they change your your thing and so they verify that there's no fraudulent voting going on so if yeah. we can do it just that easy why can't all the states well as we talked about earlier with Georgia wanting to pass its religious freedom law Georgia is not exactly the best state when it comes to progressive laws which which I kind of have a question if, if anyone who's a um, I guess working in uh, Georgia's whatever department makes their laws I'm so uh, I'm so fucking illiterate to this process right now but I got a question for you sure. if I grow out dreads and say I'm Rastafarian can I legally smoke pot that's what I want to know like if I'm Muslim I can beat the shit out of my wife and kids can I get some dreads and smoke some weed well if you're in my state you don't have to go do through the extra work <laughs> oh, you, well, you can get dreads. You can smoke weed as long as it's part of the Muslim religion. Yeah, it's not. Unfortunately, no, it's not Rastafarian religion, though. Yeah. <laughs> if not, if not, you can do shit. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how that would work. Be yeah, because once you open the door to to uh, state sponsored religion, and you still have that clause mm -hmm. of where the re state can't discriminate between religions. So once you start favoring one, you gotta let everybody do the exact same thing. So yeah, maybe that'll be a back door. You know, not only can you beat your wife, but you can smoke weed all the time too. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I, uh, I have to look into that. I, I think what I'd like to do now is is put a word in for the women. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but. Women are females, fifty percent of the population of the planet. Fifty percent of the population of the planet is over three billion people. Three billion women, say. Now, women's rights in terms of women's rights globally. Why do women not unite as against? Uh, violence against women, against abuse of women, against female genital mutilation, against um, all these laws and rules that, that, that women have to live under, especially in countries uh, that have, uh, well, Islamic countries, let's, specifically in Islamic, Islamic countries if you want to if you we we it, it bothers me that there's women in Saudi Arabia, Libya, everywhere, but we don't see them. We never see them. Do we even know if there's a woman in Saudi Arabia? We don't know because we never see them. We never see them on the internet. We never see them uh, at, uh, at 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 sports events. Like like these women are people, and they need as much uh, chance at life as you and I and 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 the only way to get a, a chance at life uh, on a level playing field is to be free and um, 
I, I, I'd like to maybe spend a couple of seconds getting your your take on 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 why this hasn't happened. Why hasn't why haven't women united as one voice? What do you think? Oh gosh, well, overseas, I have no clue. On, uh, like in Western well, civilization, globally, you know, I mean, through the United Nations, even all. Oh, they got all that stuff, but the, like you, when you're indoctrinated as a woman, you're 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 just like. The guys, they support all that stuff. Yes. You have women yes. that upholding the oppression. Yeah. I agree, but there's enough yeah, women exactly. in democratic countries like North America and India and uh, Australia. You know, there's just, just many, many, all of Europe. I mean, let's face it, there's lots of women that, that can, can uh, put their voice together and unite as one group without including those in the countries that uh, we're, we're trying to free them from their... Uh, from, from there, from these these uh, social shackles, as it were. Well, I, I think part of the reason is many of the feminists, uh, at least the feminists that we hear about in America, and it's probably like this in several of the European nations, are worried about misogyny where it doesn't exist. They're worried about things like misogyny in video games, they're worried about people going to strip clubs, they're worried about prostitution, they're worried about all kinds of shit like that, when, like you said, there's actual real government-enforced misogyny going on in the Middle East. Yeah. And things, things like that are, is something that you know I speak out against on my YouTube channel. I haven't specifically made one about the misogyny that's going on in the Middle East, but if you watch any of my videos, you know I'm obviously not a fan of Sharia law or uh, Islam in general, really. So I, I think that's part of the issue. To me, it's kind of like when you see that cops arrest so many people for things like drugs, and I think the reason they do that is because it's easy to arrest someone for drugs. It's a lot harder to arrest a murderer. It's a lot harder to arrest a rapist. So if you're a feminist, it's easy to get pissed off about a strip club. It's easy to get pissed off about uh, uh, video games and get shit like that banned in America. But it's a lot harder to actually risk your life and go over to a place like Yemen or Saudi Arabia and try to liberate these women. Right. Yeah. And we have people, actually women, moving to these countries to get married to the, whatever you want to call them, the people in the shop. Jihadist fighters, warriors—that's what they do. <laughs> but we've got to realize, we've got to also realize that it, it, specifically with the with the actual uh, action on the ground right now, these are all young people. The the women that are moving to the Islamic State uh, and making that big mistake, realize some of them realizing it when they get there. The guys, the the, the young men that are 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 uh, moving there to fight um, uh, through some kind of an idealistic. Uh, uh, for some kind of idealistic reason, these guys are young. They're all young. They're all sort of late teens, early twenties. You know, they can't make. They're going to not be able to make rational decisions like a forty-year-old or a fifty-year-old can make. Even a thirty-year-old can make. But definitely, once you hit forty, you kind of your 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 mind is kind of your brain is kind of settled. And, and, and you're not as uh, as idealistic necessarily anymore, and it's got to be tackled. It's, it, it, I, I just cannot understand why it's just ignored, ignored, ignored. Nothing's being done, and all the action, all the action that's being taken is against silliness, like you say, the drug laws and and uh, and benign victimless crimes, things like that. What a world we live in! What a fucked up world we live in! And well, Islam is not making it any better. Exactly. Uh, rant over. And it's um it's uh funny that you um uh, bring up the the part about so many men that are my age and in their teens that are going over to the Islamic state to um you know basically become terrorist jihadist uh what have you. They um uh, one of the main differences that I find between Islam and Christianity is Islam has no problem with saying that if you go to fight for them, 
that you'll get some pussy. They have no problem with it. That's why you have the 72 virgins in paradise. That's why you've got the whole idea of taking multiple wives. That's why you've got the misogyny that's layered on so much more heavily in Islam than it is in Christianity, or at least it's practiced more heavily in um, Islam than it is in Christianity. So that's why men that are my age, if you're desperate enough to get some pussy, and if you think that when you die, you're going to have 72 uh, beautiful women who are beautiful beyond uh, like the, the descriptions that mankind can give, if you think when if you die trying to murder like a U.S. troop that you're going to get that, then you can almost understand why they're willing to do this. It's because... It's it's in the ideology. It was built this way, right. you know. And now at this point, Ahmed was this warmonger. He knew what he was doing when he made that shit up. Yeah, he he he, he did good PR to to recruit people at least, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. But, but then we have to focus on those the adults who foster this type of nonsense, who who fuel this kind of fire in in, in young people's. Uh, Hearts to to to, and they believe they believe that they're gonna, you know, uh, go kill some some uh, gringo and then go to heaven if they get killed and they're gonna get. Uh, from what I understand, it's, it's seventy two virgins, like you say, beyond beautiful for for seventy years, only for seventy years, and then you get another seventy two virgins, which are even more beautiful than the. Previous 72, and this goes on for 70 years. I think that was a typo. I think it was supposed to be 72 Fig Newtons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just wish... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for Islam to disappear. Hold on a second. <laughs> I know. <laughs> How's it doing? How am I doing? Fuck. Yeah, nothing feels like prayer. <laughs> right. Oh. Actually, not praying fails just as just as, uh, as as well as praying. Oh, that just uh, this whole thing Someone made me helped. think of uh, one of the people that are like they call it Islamophobia, which I it's not real. You're not people that are focused on Islam above other religions. That's not a phobia. That's hate, which means it can't be a phobia, right? So, but uh, one of well, what do you call what do you call somebody who hates Islam? Well, well, they call well if you hate Islam more than you do Christianity or anything else, that's what they call Islamophobia, basically. But, well, let's face it, Islam is knocking on my door to kill me. Christianity isn't. Well, not there. Um, Christianity's down in. Africa knocking on doors to kill people, though. Well, I, I mean, figuratively, you know, yeah. on the on the globe, yes. And here well, in America, they're not, I asked, they're a, not, uh, not, asked a question yeah. about this on uh, some some forum. It, it was some like a uh, atheist forum that I was on a few months ago about this whole Islamophobia issue and. To, to anybody that thinks Islamophobia is a thing, I want you to listen to this question as well. If a group of neo-Nazis moved in across the door from you, so we're talking big, tattooed white guys that are bald with swastika tattoos on their head, you know, Hail Hitler tattooed on their fucking neck and shit. These guys carry around a copy of Mein Kampf. They're always yammering on about how all the Jews need to die and how if you're not Aryan, you're scum of the earth. Let me ask you something. Do you think it's rational to be afraid of those guys? Because that's kind of how I look at um, being Islamophobic. It's rational well, to be afraid of, of, a, of a group of people that you realize many of them are willing to kill you for being an infidel. Well, the funny thing is, I have the Nazi Bible right here, okay, and I, I you know, I, I, I will, I would cherry pick out of here things that I like and things that I don't like because I call myself a moderate Nazi. Now, I 
like the autobahns and I, and I like the big buildings, the big structures, but I like the Jews. I don't have anything against the Jews. So, you know, I, I, I would call myself a, an extremely moderate Nazi. Now, if these were the people moving across the street, how would you feel then? Someone who's an extremely moderate Nazi? Yeah. Well, here's the deal. So, <laughs> yes. you, 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 you don't have the swastika tattoo on your forehead. Yeah, you, uh, do. you don't... I don't think you carry around a copy of Mein Kampf. You don't look like you've got the Hail Hitler tattoo on your neck. And you don't yammer on about killing Jews. So, I've never met a moderate Nazi before. <laughs> so if well, that's, well, what you wanna, the, that's what that's you want to call the, yourself, the, uh, so, so far I don't really have a problem with you. But honestly, I don't think that that's... I don't think that's really something you should call yourself because just imagine if you say, hi, I'm a moderate Nazi, yeah. people yes. are going to form uh, some opinions about you. And just so just so people don't get carried away, <laughs> Sid is not really a moderate Nazi. It's, it's, it's just a, what do you call that, a hypothetical, okay? Oh, it's a hypothetical, right. I, 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 I thought you were being a little bit serious for a second. Okay. That is a little sarcastic. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no, no. But, but my point was... And, and you, you kind of um, alluded to it. You said, if you're going to call yourself a moderate Nazi, then uh, I've never heard of it before, etc., etc. And you're right. There's no such thing as a moderate Nazi. But then at the same time, there's no such thing as a moderate Muslim because they all read the same book. They all support financially the cause of jihad, otherwise if they didn't, of course there wouldn't be such a huge supply of arms, ammunition, and uh, people, and invading army against them. Um, the, 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 the word moderate, when it, when it, when it is, uh, when, when it is um, linked to Nazism or Islam, doesn't fit. Just doesn't fit. And, and, and Nazism is gone. We've outlawed that. Right. The ideology has been outlawed. Islam is an ideology that should be outlawed just as quickly. Today, tomorrow, now. Do it. Yeah, I think the big point of it is, but it's, it's, it's all the major religions, the, the Catholic Church, Israel, American fundamentalists. It's not just Islam that's doing this. It's, we've seen this before. The the window dressing has changed, but but that's it. It's we yeah, but, but it's Islam that's doing it now. Yeah, we it was just, Christianity that did it uh, eight hundred uh, what eight hundred years ago. Uh, it was the Jews who did it uh, in the Old Testament, according to the Old Testament, who did it. They killed, uh, as I mentioned, the Amalekites and uh, Midianites. Uh, so that was a Jewish sort of a genocide against others. Uh, well, it's yeah, that's that's from the past, but just in now, yeah, Muslims are going around chopping people. The only difference between an extremist Muslim and a moderate Muslim is the moderate Muslims like, yeah, I support all the Islam laws of Islam. I I just got this job in a family, so I can't really go out there and chop heads off right now. <laughs> that's right. Gotta wait till. Oh, right, and, and, and another thing that you have to keep in mind if you're moderately religious, because I'm sure that some people that are either watching this now or that might watch this later are going to be all butthurt if they call themselves moderately religious. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a moderate Christian or you're a moderate Muslim, like say you're a moderate Christian and the way you're moderate is you have no problem with homosexuality. If you, if you yourself don't have a problem with homosexuality, that means that you are admitting that there is a problem with your Bible. So if you're saying that there's a problem with your Bible, that means that your God obviously does not make the best decisions. So you're already admitting to yourself that your God does not make the best decisions. Why are you worshiping him? Why are you calling mm -hmm. him this all-knowing, all-benevolent be all being if he's making these decisions that even you yourself know are not good decisions. Correct. You make the you make an extremely good point, 
and I would like to see some uh, some viewer response to that because that's probably we could actually make a whole uh, show out of that. Out of that yeah, I, I did like a. 12 minute, uh, it was more of a rant than a video because it wasn't really scripted in any way about why being moderately religious doesn't make any fucking sense. And that's pretty much the reason. Well, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and a lot of us in this community like to point out, oh fuck, my brain just shit on me. Oh yeah, the, the American Tea Party Christian fundamentalists, those are the true Christians. They're the ones following the word of the book. The, the, mm -hmm. the all that you know and this it's the same so those are not the extremists those are the moderates they're they're the true Christians and the true Muslims are the ones chopping people's limbs off and whatnot and the true Jews are the ones that are uh, uh, circumcising babies penises yeah. with and giving them herpes yeah yeah giving babies herpes herpes yeah. um, Totally still... legally, totally no problem. You can you can mutilate a a, a a male's genitals when he's eight days old. No problem. It's just a yeah, mutilation. You know, well, this is me right off, man. Well, that's according to the Old Testament. Is babies don't get their souls until like a week after birth or something. In some ch in some verses, it's like a month after birth. <laughs> so, I don't think they don't have a soul yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's uh, something I, I, do I like to bring that. up on abortion topics. The the fact that you're not considered human until you're like seven days old. Yeah, <laughs> according uh, to the religion. Why do you, why do you bring that up? Uh, silly, silly, silly. It's as if a sperm and an egg are not alive because life begins at conception. Yeah, and I, I anyway, told... we've. Uh, Oh yeah, we're. We've. Uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, we have um, this hour has really uh, zoomed by. It has been an hour, but we can carry on for a little while if you like. Well, I like to keep the to, to the one hour time. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, then in that case, I think uh, we can wrap up uh, before I let uh, before Mental Outlaw and and Lou and I. Well, and Lou says. Their last words. I would like to say my last words, and that is to plug. I just want to plug Secular TV. I love the idea. I am excited about it. I want I, everybody else on the secular side of the of the fence to show their support to uh, uh, tell us how we're doing. Tell us what you want to see. Because the goal of Secular TV, as you know, as I've mentioned before, is to help promote unique and interesting content while focusing on a variety of diverse ideas that appeal to various groups in the secular community. So um, I want to say before uh, before these uh, before Lou and, uh, and Mental Outlaw say goodbye, I'm going to say my goodbyes to you right now. Thank you so much for watching, and do join us again next week. 4 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday. Mental outlaw. Yeah. In last words. words. Um. Yeah. This this was pretty fun. I look forward to doing it again every Tuesday. Is it? That uh, you, we uh, have yes show? every Tuesday. Yeah. We, Definitely. Our shows every Tuesday. We'd love to have you back. There's yeah. actually more stuff I'd like to cover with you since you live on the the East Coast. Definitely. So, okay. okay. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah. And as always, for our our uh, guests, whatever you call us, I have no clue. But uh, their channels will be linked somewhere in this neighborhood of the video right now. I have to go through after it's done and put that stuff in. So channel links will be provided. And what else was there? Oh, yes. And another thing Sid keeps forgetting about secular TV is we have – the what I like to call the late night atheist show known as the rambling tangent we got our swing shift workers that get off work and like to bullshit about who knows what uh, zombies and and everything else and they're on at like 11 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time I think they're on tonight too on a Tuesday they're on the Tuesday lineup 
So yeah. Yeah, I think they're on eight, eight o'clock Eastern. Right? So it's not all just important things or angry things. We got some comedians in the house too. <laughs> so yeah, I think Absolutely. that's all I got. Well, um, I really thank you very much for uh, taking time to uh, taking an hour out of your busy day to watch. Um, and I'd like to wish you uh, a great week because we'll see you in seven days. Until then, peace. <laughs>